I am good. Can you can you tell me um, uh, what the most frustrating thing or the the thing that you would want to see? Um, want to make sure people really understand about what the president said last night. Well, what he didn't say and what he should have said is that on the anniversary of 9-11, we should remember who attacked us, al-Qaeda. And we certainly shouldn't go into a civil war and be allies with al-Qaeda. Anything we do to destabilize Assad over there is going to reward al-Qaeda. There's a danger, I think, also that uh, Assad could lose control of the chemical weapons and that al-Qaeda could take them. So really, I think most Americans are getting that, but the president doesn't quite get it. So what is this really all about? I mean, is he this arrogant, out of touch, and um, delusional? I think people confuse sort of tragedy with the that there is an answer always to tragedy, that we have to be the ones and we will be the ones that will rescue the world from terrible tragedy. It is an awful thing, you know, the gassing and the, to watch those horrific videos of people dying from gas. But, you know, it's an also an awful, awful thing to see Islamic rebels cutting the heart and liver out of a soldier and eating them on television or beheading or killing priests or you know, raising Christian villages over there. So there's a lot of atrocity going on on both sides and uh, just no clear-cut, uh, you know, friend of America in the so, Civil War. So help me out on this, Rand, because um, if there is a clear and present danger to the United States and if there is a way to uh, solve it, I'll consider things. For instance, and I've been trying to say because people are like, well, you would have gone in for Germany. That was the president's argument. You would have helped the people in Germany. Yes, but Germany was a Western civilization that had gone off the rails. And the rebels, if you will, the underground, were not eating the uh, the other soldiers. And they were not against the United States. And so there was, there was a way to put that country, to, uh, not even put it together... But have that country put itself back together when you rid it when you rid it of the evil that was running it. Well, we have so many false analogies floating around. Another one is that if we don't do something about chemical weapons, that North Korea will think that they can use chemical weapons with impunity. And my response to that is, if North Korea were to unleash any amount of chemical weapons on our soldiers that are stationed over there, uh, they wouldn't last 24 hours. There would not be one vote against us intervening in North Korea, and there would not be one person in America who doesn't say no country will ever gas Americans. So this isn't a toleration of anybody gassing anybody. It's just an acknowledgement that we are, are not sure who the good guys are or who's the the least bad guy in the Syrian civil war. But it's not an encouragement to anybody around the world. And I've said the message from 9-11 is we will never, ever tolerate someone attacking our country or our American interests around the world, and I think that's what the message of 9-11 should be. But uh, the president's credibility may be on the line over the Syrian civil war, but America's credibility and what America will do when attacked, I think, should be very certain to the rest of the world. Last night on TV, I had um, uh, three military men, General Boykin, um, Pete Scobell, who is um, who was in um, San Diego with the um, uh, Navy SEALs, um, and uh, General, I mean, uh, Lieutenant Colonel um, Cowan, um, all highly decorated, seasoned uh, veterans. And I asked them, what about these military guys who are with their uniform on, holding up a sign saying, I will not fight for Al-Qaeda? Uh, I, what I thought should happen to them is they should be punished because you can't do that with a, you know, but they should have the courage of their conviction to take their lumps um, and, you know, serve the penalty for that. But to stand, uh, General uh, Boykin said that it is time for a four-star general to walk in and put his stars down on the table and say, I can't be a part of this anymore. But he doesn't think anybody will. What would you say to the, uh, to the military men? Many of them have come up to me in the last week and said, I, w- I can't do it. I cannot fight for al-Qaeda. I don't believe in any of this stuff. 
You know, we're, we're hearing it directly from soldiers. We're hearing it from their parents, their relatives, that uh, they just can't see. They, they're willing to, to sacrifice life and limb for their country. They've fought for 10 years for us. These are the, you know, the cream of American patriots that are, are willing to fight for their country, but they aren't willing to fight for al-Qaeda. And uh, it's difficult once you get into the chain of command and what you can say and cannot say, because the military has to have rules, and they do have rules on this. Um, but I don't think that means we have to go scouring the Internet looking for GIs who have posted videos. And so it's one thing to say we have rules about soldiers getting involved in politics and making political statements, but it's another to say that we have to go scouring the Internet for people who might have posted a video uh, being critical of a war effort. So, um, you know, and I think, you know, being reprimanded or whatever they have to do, but I, I wouldn't want to see young men court-martialed for basically posting their opinion. <laughs>